Thank you. Uh, I'll now recognize uh, Representative Maliotakis, uh, who is the ranking member on uh, our International Organization Subcommittee. Uh, thank you, Ambassador uh, Thomas Greenfield. I'd like to thank you again for joining us today. Uh, and for decades, you've worked with uh, refugee communities who have found safety, freedom, and opportunity here in the United States. So thank you for your service. Uh, like so many that you have worked to support in the past, my mother fled her native Cuba as a refugee with her family in 1959. She fled to escape the cruel oppression that accompanied the arrival of the very same communist regime that rules over Cuba today. Average Cubans, like my mother's family, were left behind, including the family I still have there, have suffered for more than 60 years under a regime that has denied them the basic freedoms we take for granted here in the United States. Freedom of speech, freedom of artistic expression, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion. I can go on and on. This is a regime that has beaten, jailed, killed its own people. Uh, Ambassador, I'm deeply troubled that um, this country, like China, Russia, and Venezuela, have seats in the United Nations Human Rights Council. And I understand that uh, President Biden, Biden is looking to re-enter the Human Rights Council. Uh, what, can, what can you tell us to assure that we're going to be, what will change by re-entering, number one, because we, we, we've always, you know, I know President Obama had always pushed to have a seat at the table. We need to be at the table in order to engage, but nothing has changed. And these people who are the biggest violators of human rights are on that committee. So what will be different if we were to rejoin, and what can you do in your capacity to ensure that there will be changes and these individuals are held accountable? Uh, thank you for that question. And I, I would say that what changed when we were not on the council was that nobody paid attention to these issues in the way that we pay attention to these issues. So being at the table means that there is someone who's strong, who has a voice that has influence, that can push back on the efforts of those who are human rights violators who are sitting at the table as well. Uh, and I think many other of our allies, many small countries who are there, don't have the, the power to do it alone. And they need our backing, they need our support. And we can galvanize their, their energy to push back against, uh, against countries that are uh, the bad actors on the Human Rights Council. So as long as this council has those individuals or these, those countries all as members, it's a complete joke. I mean, these are, we're talking about people who, you know, look what's happening in Venezuela right now. It's the same, same thing that's happened to Cuba. Um, but look what's happening with the Muslim uh, Uyghur community uh, under China, what Russia is doing to its political opponents. You know, th that's my concern. By re-entering, we're giving United Nations United Nations Human Rights Council legitimacy, I believe. And so I'm just, I'm, 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 I would like to meet with you at a separate time to discuss this because I'd really like to see uh, us using any leverage that we may have by re-entering to really get some reforms. And if you'd like to comment on any reforms that you would be seeking on that committee, I'd greatly appreciate it. Well, I definitely will uh, look forward to working with you on that because we want the council to work. And we know the council is not perfect. It is, it is extraordinarily flawed uh, with the fact that we have uh, gross human rights violators sitting on, on the council. But we have also been able to call out those violators on the council. We've been able to call out countries who are not on the council and address issues that some of the members of the council don't want to uh, address. And I think that's where we play a key role. No one would play that role if we were not sitting at the table. Well, I appreciate and I do look forward to continuing this conversation with me and just the fact that they had uh, Maduro speaking at their opening meeting, it tells you everything you need to know about this council and that it's certainly um, not working as it is. And I, I hope to have your support also with removal of item number seven regarding Israel from this. I know it was mentioned and, and obviously it was a bipartisan uh, support uh, for reform of this council. And so I hope that you will, will support the removal of that item uh, from the agenda. We do. And uh, we think it's unfair, and we will do everything possible to have it removed and have continued to do that. I appreciate that. And with my last 30 seconds, uh, regarding the UN Security Council, what can we be done or what action can you take uh, to try to hold uh, you know, Russian hackers accountable? How can we use this council uh, position to try to go after Russian ha hackers, try to push for some accountability for those who are uh, you know, a, a, a 
hacking into our, uh, whether it be the pipelines or, or meat industry, or what, what can we do to, to use that position to get some answers and accountability? Yeah, the council needs to focus on cybersecurity. And I mentioned earlier that uh, the Estonians who are president of the council this month actually has as their high level event uh, next week, a discussion of cybersecurity and how we can uh, change the rules that and hold people accountable. And I think this is uh, a way that we will be calling out the Russians. Estonia has been a, a strong voice in that, and we, we very much support what they're doing, and there are other members of the council who support that as well. I look forward to watching that interaction, and please be strong on that issue. Thank you.